we have to understand female psychology that what women think they want isn't always necessarily what they really want. And this happens with you and your purpose. So the most attractive thing to a woman is a man who puts himself and his purpose first, but she's a very close second. Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, my married brothers? Thank you for clicking into this one. I super appreciate it. You know, for months and months, actually years, I've had married dudes and dudes in relationships hit me up and be like, bro, why don't you have a program for married men? Why don't you work with guys like me? Like, what the hell are you doing? I have to keep my wife attracted to me, keep my wife from leaving me, keep my girlfriend into me so she doesn't cheat on me the way other girls have in my past. Why the fuck won't you help us? And my answer was always, you know, I'm into that kind of relationships are important. I do have a lot of information about how to have a healthy relationship, but I'm more interested in helping guys approach women, attract them, date them and get them to be your girlfriend rather than so much keeping them as your girlfriend or wife. But as I've moved through my own evolution, this topic has become a lot more important to me because I too am in a relationship. I've been with my woman, Marissa, for several years and relationship game is really important. And women do leave men, oftentimes for the reasons I'm going to explain today. So I'm going to give you guys 10 bulletproof tips for how to keep your wife or girlfriend attracted to you. And there's a huge announcement that I want to unveil to you guys. This is a one time offer that I literally just came up with this weekend. And I was like, you know what, I am going to roll this out. Because again, I always have guys hit me up, married guys being like, dude, why won't you work with me? I'm kind of butthurt about this, bro. Like, why won't you help me? And I want to help you guys. So because I've evolved in my own consciousness around marriage and relationships and how to keep a woman happy and how most importantly, keep yourself happy in a relationship, I want to extend to you guys an offer that's only for married men and men in relationships. As you know, I rarely do this. I've never done this before, been a dating coach for a long time. And this is the first offer that I'm unveiling to you. I'm going to test it with the first group of guys. And then if it pans out to be something successful, maybe I'll unveil it in a bigger way to the majority of my audience. So here it is. You guys know that I do NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Neuro Linguistic Programming goes to work on metaprograms, schemas, archetypes, and belief systems inside your head that often keep you unattractive to women and or make your wife lose attraction for you. There are many important variables and attributes that you as a man have to demonstrate to your wife consistently and perpetually. Otherwise, she will lose attraction for you. And yes, she's going to leave you. I'm going to go over some of those today. But invariably, even if I tell you what those are, unless you're working on the bullshit inside your head, oftentimes it's not so easy to change it. I have a saying in my coaching, which is awareness alone is curative, which means when you understand why you do certain things, you can often change it, but not always. NLP allows you to change it. NLP allows you to remove those belief systems, go after traumas in the past, such as your mom not really showing you love, and now you're needy towards your wife, and it's turning her off. So what I'm proposing to you guys is an NLP custom protocol designed specifically for you. If you're married or in a relationship and it's a three-month protocol, very similar to what I build for my guys in my coaching program. But this is specifically for married dudes and guys who want to keep their girlfriend or wife attracted to them. So I'm going to take a very small handful of men. I only have so much time and obviously my time is dedicated to my coaching clients and my three-month coaching program. But I do have a little extra bandwidth and I love, absolutely love building out NLP protocols for men. So if you're married or have a girlfriend, I want you to email me at coachmarksing at gmail.com. I will talk to you a little bit. I'll tell you about what this three-month protocol entails. And then if you're interested, we move forward. You get the NLP intake form and then I build out for you 
this custom three-month NLP protocol to keep your wife from leaving you, to become more attractive, to build your frame, to remove bullshit from your head, such as bad belief systems, traumas you've had in the past, archetypes and schemas that aren't working for you. Guys, I have been begged for years by married men to do this for you guys. Now I'm unveiling it, but I'm letting you know I'm only taking a small handful of men because I'm a limited resource and I only have so much time. So if you're interested in doing this, I suggest you shit or get off the pot, which means email me right the fuck now because I'm telling you, this is going to sell out as all my stuff does. Every time I do things, they sell out usually within minutes, not even hours, let alone days. If you're interested in this, email me at coachmarksingh at gmail.com. You can also find my email in the description below. Send me that email. You and I will talk about what it entails to get this NLP protocol, what the cost is, etc. And we'll see if this is a good fit for you. Once again, email me at coachmarksingh at gmail.com. All right, boys, we got a lot to get into. So let's go ahead and get into it. First of all, it's important to understand that the most important thing for a woman to know about you is that you adore her. However, you adore your purpose first. Women will tell you, and your wife has maybe even told you this, that she wants to be your number one priority. Is that true? No, it isn't. We have to understand female psychology, that what women think they want isn't always necessarily what they really want. And this happens with you and your purpose. So the most attractive thing to a woman is a man who puts himself and his purpose first, but she's a very close second. And she wants to know that you adore her, you're attracted to her, you love her. You guys are soulmates. You're just meant to be. She is your everything, but not everything, everything. And this is the funny psychology about women. They think they want one thing, but they actually want something else. She wants to know she's your everything, Kinda. And that's female psychology 101. So you do adore your woman, you love her, and I'm going to tell you how to deliver it in the right calibration so she stays attracted to you and she doesn't leave you. Let me ask you a question. What do you think the most important thing is for men when it comes to their women? The most important thing for men is that they feel their woman is their biggest cheerleader. She believes in him. She's proud of him. She supports him. And she knows that if he keeps pushing towards his purpose, one of the things I love most about Marissa, my woman, she absolutely adores me and believes in me to no end. She has utmost faith in me that I can literally accomplish anything. She always says to me, whatever you touch turns to gold. I know you'll take care of me. I know you'll take care of this family. I feel safe in your presence. I feel safe in your arms. I love that. I absolutely love it, and I know you love it too. So perhaps there's women listening who want to know how to be a better wife or a better girlfriend. This is the way to do it. Be your man's biggest cheerleader. This is what men want most. All right, let's get into the 10 rules or strategies about how to keep a woman attracted to you and prevent her from leaving you. Number one, and I alluded to it previously, she is not your number one. Your purpose is your number one. And this goes into number two, which is you have to be ambitious. Ambition and confidence are the two most important attractive qualities a man can have. So if you're ambitious, such as I'm ambitious about this podcast, I'm ambitious about helping guys meet women, and now I'm ambitious about helping married men, when you're ambitious towards your purpose, whatever it is, it is attractive. I have a friend who owns an RC car racing track. He absolutely loves it. He's obsessed with it. It's all the guy thinks about. And he has a wife who's really happy with him. So even though RC cars are kind of not cool at first blush, the fact that he's passionate about it and he's following his ambition without apology is attractive. So she's not your number one. Your purpose is your number one. And you have to be ambitious. Number three is you must lead the frame. Now, this can become a 20-minute podcast all on its own. If you haven't heard every single episode I've ever done on frame control, I suggest you do that right now or after this episode. Frame control means you're leading the relationship. It means that you want a little bit less than she does, which I'm going to get into in a second. But frame control means you have boundaries, you lead her to where she wants to be led, and you are not to be fucked with. 
If you're in a situation where your wife wears the pants and you're in the feminine role, I can almost guarantee you she's either going to cheat on you or leave you. So what can be done in such a situation? You have to start taking the frame back little by little. You have to start imposing boundaries little by little. And though she might first complain about it, she might argue with you about it, she might be resistant towards it, eventually it will make her more attracted to you and prevent her from leaving you. Frame control is the most important thing when it comes to attracting a woman, and it's one of the most important things to keeping your wife or your girlfriend from leaving you. All right, the next one is the 80-100 rule. You've probably heard me talk about this before on this podcast. You have to want 80% of what she wants from you. So if she wants to hang out with you five nights a week, you hang out with her four. If she wants to spend X many vacations per year with you, you do about 80% of what she wants. The amount of compliments that she gives you, you give her about 80% of that. Why is this? Why, as a dating coach, do I have to come up with these rules that may seem manipulative or misogynist in certain ways? It's not. It's basically based on the rule that the person who wants less in any relationship is the one who's leading. And the one who's leading is the one who's in the masculine role. Let me repeat that. The person who wants less is the one who's leading. The one who's leading is in the masculine role. So you, brother, as the husband, have to want less than she does. It's just the way it is. So if you're needy towards her, if you're going to her with your problems and crying in her lap, hoping that your tears will be used as lubricant for sex, you are going to push her away, and there's a very good chance she's either going to leave you or cheat on you. The 80-100 rule needs to be part of the backbone of your relationship, including frame control. The next one. You have to have a 50-50 mix of messing around to being serious, of busting her chops, teasing her, smacking her ass, playing with her, doing pranks on her, etc., having a good time, kind of like you guys are flirting again, to 50% being serious. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of concepts at you. All of these, of course, are discussed on this podcast, but the 8100 rule is different from this 50-50 rule. 8100 rule means you give her 80% of you. That's basically it. Whatever she wants from you, mostly like spending time together, you give her 80%. Not 85%, not 75%, 80%. Now, when it comes to messing around versus being serious, it's 50-50. So with Marissa, for example, I always tease her. I like smack her hair next to her shoulder. I smack her butt. I make fun of her a little bit. I tease her. We have fun. We laugh. We joke. I run gambits on her still. Little personality tests, many of which you can learn on this podcast. But then 50% of the time, I'm serious. And serious means, hey, how was your day today? Hey, how do you feel about the fact that XYZ negative thing happened to you? I let her vent to me, which is called Venus Talks, which I'm going to get into in a second. So I want to ask you, brother, in your relationship, are you about 50-50? Probably not. Maybe you're too serious too often. Maybe you're not playful enough. Or maybe you're so playful that she feels like, God, this guy always fucks around and I don't really know him. Now, this 50-50 is obviously a generalization. Some girls prefer 75-25, though I wouldn't extend it much beyond that. You kind of have to figure out what works with your wife and deliver that consistently. The next one, and this is so important, boys, do not bring your problems to your woman. Your problems are there for your mentor, for your coach, and maybe even your friends. If you don't have a mentor or you're not getting coaching consistently, I have to question you. If you want to be a tier one dude, a dude who your wife continues to be in love with for the rest of your life, you have to fucking work on yourself. And that could start by coming into my program and doing three months of customized NLP. You got to email me, dude. I'm sure I'm already receiving emails about that. And I'm only taking a limited number of dudes. But you do not go to your wife with your problems. No, if you cry in her lap, your tears will not be used as lubricant for sex. Some of you guys do this. Some of you guys share everything with your woman. I disagree with that. You should share those things that you have a fucking solution for or those vulnerabilities that you've already overcome. If you have something that you're super afraid of, if you have something that you don't know how you're going to overcome it and you're terrified about it, don't even mention it to her. Now, I know you may say, well, dude, I thought in a relationship you have to be honest, you have to be upfront. 
Yes, you should be, but you should always have a solution ready to go and confidence that you will get through the problem once you bring it to her. You can bring your problems, but dude, you got to be ready to solve them. You cannot go to her and say, hey, I'm really scared and crying in her lap and being like, fix this for me, baby, because I don't know how to do it. Sure, you could come up to her with a solution and say, hey, we have this issue, right? This is what I'm thinking as far as the solution is concerned. What do you think we should do? Then you guys work as a team to work it out, but it's always going to her solution-oriented as a masculine man should be. If you go to her problem-focused, crying like a fucking bitch, she's going to lose attraction for you. Why? It's not masculine. Masculinity is towards-oriented, solution-oriented. It is a problem-solver. And that's the way she should feel you look at problems. Problems are simply challenges that I'm going to overcome. I got this, baby. I'm strong enough to do it. Let's fucking go. And you might even admit to her that you're nervous. You might even admit to her that this is a big challenge, but you can do it. It's that self-belief. So when I say don't go to a woman with your problems, I mean problems that don't have solutions. Avoid that at all costs because they will cheat on you for it. The next one, as I alluded to earlier, is to flirt with her, but also to bring her romance. Surprise her. Boys, huge tip that I agree with you is very annoying, but here it is. Give her flowers at least twice a month. I do this for my woman. She fucking loves it. Whereas us guys, we spend a hundred bucks on flowers and we're like, dude, there's a wasted hundred bucks. I might as well have just taken a hundred dollar bill, made it into a ball and threw it into the toilet. Because that's literally how us men feel about flowers. But remember, Women are very emotion-oriented. They're externally validated, and they get their energy from external places. Puppy dogs, ice creams, literotica, cute TV shows, and yes, flowers. Drop her flowers unexpectedly. We don't want her to ever hint towards it. You drop that girl flowers about twice a month, you're getting your dick sucked, bro. I know you like that sick duck. I know that's what you want more than anything. Bring the girl flowers, you fucking idiot. Don't be so selfish. Drop her flowers tomorrow. Watch what happens. And don't just do flowers when you cheat on her or she says, hey, I want you to get me flowers. Surprise that girl. Romance her. Take her to nice dinners. Surprise her with trips if you have the money to do so. Or just surprise her with a little token of your appreciation because she mentioned the other day, oh, I really like those cute earrings that I saw at whatever, Claire's. It doesn't even have to be much money but you're surprising her with tokens of your appreciation. Remember, what's the most important thing for a woman? To be adored by her man. And on that note, you should learn what her love language is. Does she like to be complimented? Does she like favors to be done for her? Does she like to be swooped off her feet and surprised? You need to figure out what she likes and do it, bro. Relationships take work, man. It is what it is, but I'll tell you this. Being in a relationship, especially with a woman who you have a child with, is the most rewarding thing you'll ever do, but it takes work, you fucking idiot. Don't be so selfish. Work on your relationship. She's worth it. Remember how beautiful she was the moment you realized you were in love with her. Remember the way she looked walking down the aisle. Remember the tears in her eyes when she gave birth to your firstborn. These are the moments that you have to focus on. These are the moments that are going to continue to allow you to adore her, which is what she wants most from you. The next one is to blow her mind in the bedroom. I know, and believe me, I know, because I've been in a relationship for several years. Sometimes it gets a little old doing the old routine, right? Like get her in the bed, make out with her, go down on her for a while, have sex, flip her doggy style. She rides you to the end, boom, done. You guys got to mix it up doing it in different places, doing it in public perhaps, not saying anything personal, but that really turns them on, bringing in toys such as vibrators, learning how to really lick her well, role playing. You got to mix it up, man. What did I just say? Relationships are successful when you work on them. And this includes sex. Blow her mind in the bedroom. And yeah, you can sit back sometimes and get a little sick duck. Look at the ceiling and thank your uncle Mark Singh for bringing her those flowers that night. And now you're getting your dick sucked. And you're like, thank you, Uncle Mark Singh. You know, if I were smart, I'd probably take your NLP protocol. But I was a lazy son of a bitch and I never emailed you. Now I feel like an idiot. And I should go kick rocks with my head down, focusing on the head down part. Don't look up. 
Don't look where you're walking. You are in shame, young man. So keep your head down as you kick those rocks. If, in fact, you didn't email me about my NLP protocol, the next one, gentlemen, do not try to solve her problems. A super good tip that me and my woman do is this. When she comes to me with a problem, and remember, I don't come to her with problems without solutions, but she can. She can come to me because I'm the rock of Gibraltar. Her little waves are lapping up against my steady ass rock in the middle of the ocean, and that's what you need to be too. When she comes to you with a problem, you say this, sweetheart, do you just want me to listen to you or do you want me to offer solutions? 90% of the time, she's going to say, I just want you to listen to me. And you just listen. You don't try to solve her problems. You frown your eyebrows, you stare at her mouth, and then you come out the old sweetheart. You're the sweetest guy ever because you didn't try to solve them. We as men are what? Solution-oriented. If you're masculine, you love solutions. You love figuring shit out. But don't do that with women. Let her come to you with her problems and vent to you and sit there and say nothing. Be completely present. Give her a space to be, which means you're not thinking about solutions. Stop that gorilla-ass mind of yours and just be present. Focus on her beautiful smile, her beautiful tits, her beautiful eyes, whatever it is to bring yourself into the present moment and just listen to her. So she's probably going to want to just vent, but if she does want solutions, then you can offer that to her. Now, here's what you do, and this is called Venus Talks. After she vents to you, you give her a 20-second hug. 20 seconds. They have proven scientifically that when you do that, oxytocin, serotonin, and a bunch of other complicated chemicals that are difficult to pronounce are released in your head and her head, and there's bonding that occurs between you two. After you guys do that, you separate, go your different ways. She goes and plucks the flowers you bought her. You go downstairs and play Call of Duty. All good, gentlemen. Listen to her problems. 20-second hug. That's called Venus Talks. Another game changer that Marissa and I do is what we call seven seconds of heaven. Science has proven that when you kiss somebody for seven seconds, those same chemicals that I just discussed are released in huge doses inside your brain. So you kiss that girl for seven seconds, and then when you guys pop out, you're going to look at each other and be like, damn, dude, I'm feeling the heat. And you might begin boning because I'm telling you, that seven seconds, and sometimes Marissa and I do more than that, is really powerful. Seven seconds of heaven. Steal it. Next one, compliment your girl. Now, always within the 8100 rule, always giving her 80% of what she wants, but compliment her. Make her feel beautiful. Adore her. Here's a really interesting thing. If you think that your wife has let herself go, if you think she's not as attractive as you want her to be, part of that is your fault. If you want your wife to be beautiful, you have to speak identity into her as beautiful. Then maybe she'll start doing her hair more, doing her makeup more, getting on the damn Stairmaster that you bought her for Christmas 2019 that's collecting dust in the basement. You have to make her feel beautiful because if you have any kind of passive aggressive statements and or even energy towards her about how she's not taking care of herself, she's going to continue to not take care of herself because you as the man need to speak identity into the woman. So you tell her, baby, you're so beautiful today. God, your eyes are gorgeous. I love how you do this. Mm, I could just watch you walk away every single time. I'll let Marissa like catch me looking at her and I'll just be like, you're looking pretty cute today. I kind of want to get that right now. And she's like, you do? And then she like perks up. Now she's like wearing tighter clothes. She's kind of pushing her tits out more. She's flipping her hair. She's wearing makeup. They get more beautiful when you tell them they are beautiful. Your interpretation of how they are is how they're going to be. All right, boys. And my final one as we get up into 24-ish minutes here is you guys need to see a counselor. Now, you're probably thinking, what? I mean, our relationship is good. It's working well. Why do we need to see a counselor? Boys, my relationship is pretty much fucking perfect. I give it a straight 9.8 out of 10. Part of the reason is because we see a counselor once a month. We don't really have huge problems, but you'd be amazed how little things can sneak in that need to be talked about. Communication, communication, communication is the most important thing in your entire relationship. You need to communicate with her what it is that she's doing that annoys you, what it is you're doing that annoys her, 
ways you guys can improve, ways that perhaps she passive aggressively pissed you off and or you did the same to her. There's little insidious things that come in that you can't just sweep under the rug because here's what happens when you sweep it under the rug. The mound on the rug gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you can't even walk across the room. This is the beginning of her either cheating on you or leaving you or God forbid you cheating on her or leaving her. It's because you guys aren't talking about what it is that you want, what it is that you're resentful for, what it is that annoys you, and even what it is that you love. Communicate, boys. And the best way to do this, i found, is to see a counselor for one hour a month. What's the big deal? You guys talk. The counselor brings stuff out of you. We've had moments where we went into the counseling session like totally fine. And at the end, we're like, damn, dude, I didn't realize that was happening because she didn't tell me this in a conversation or I didn't tell her, even though her and I have an agreement, and this may even be number 11, where if something annoys you, let her know, talk about it, say, hey, that hurt my feelings. Although as a man, you shouldn't get so easily butthurt, but maybe she passive aggressively says shit to you in front of her mother to make her mother feel a certain way because of an insecurity that she has, and you've never talked about it. You'd be wise to talk about that shit. Get everything out in the open. Be down to the penny honest. These are only some of the ways, gentlemen, to make a relationship work. But here's the most important thing. You are the mechanism that dictates the success both of your life as well as your relationships. If you have a belief system, I'm not worthy of love, or I'm not enough, or she's too hot for me, or she's going to leave me for another guy, or she's not taking care of herself enough, it's all belief systems. It's all traumas from your past. I am offering to you a one-time limited time offer to work with me specifically to build you a custom three-month NLP protocol to go after your belief systems, your traumas, your meta programs, your schemas, your archetypes that have held you back both with life and yes, maybe even your current marriage or your current relationship. A one-time offer, a limited time offer. Email me at coachmarksing at gmail.com. You and I will talk about it. No commitments until you agree to it. Let me just tell you what it is I'm going to do for you, and we'll see if it's a good fit. What's the harm in that? I'll be expecting your email soon, gentlemen. I hope you got something out of this. As I was talking about it, I was like, yo, I actually do have a lot of information about how to make relationships work. And honestly, in my three-month coaching program, that's all we talk about in the last two weeks because it is important once you get a girl how to keep that girl because if you've ever been cheated on the way I was when I was 21, I don't ever want to fuck with that vibe again relationships take work and they take you moving into your masculinity and yeah brother dealing with your bullshit because you have bullshit inside of you that could be self-sabotaging your relationship what would it be like if you lost that woman be pretty fucking shitty especially if you truly love her if you really love her you'll fix you and that will help fix the relationship and prevent her from leaving you email me coachmarksing at gmail.com we'll talk I appreciate you guys listening. I drop podcasts on Mondays and Thursdays, so please stay tuned for the next one, and I will see you in the next episode.